Today we are going to be wiring up this endoskeleton creature thing I created. What you probably see now is this kind of blinky thing going on. I have this Arduino board here connected to this breadboard and wrench army members. We actually prototyped this together. So to catch everybody up, we're going to answer the question of, is it really true that who smelt it is the one who really dealt it? or the one who denied it was the one who really supplied it. And we are going to do this in the most scientific way that, you know, I can think of doing it. The project here is to create a fart detector. And in our first stream, I tried to like pretty up the name and call it a Fletchwosity meter. All in all, it is a fart detector. So what we did is create just kind of the mechanics and electronics of how this was gonna work. And I thought it would be really cool to try and like disguise this in something. I thought about like cool lunch boxes, you know, like if you're at work, no one would suspect, hiding it in a briefcase, but then, I thought, who would suspect little Fartitukis here would be sniffing around for those noxious gases? And I figured we're gonna somehow disguise this device inside him. And for our prototype, uh, I went ahead and wired these LEDs for its lights. Now it'll have two of each, of course. We just did one just to see if we can get the, the darn thing working, right? Here are his little eyes. And the reason I chose uh, Farta took his here is because my dog had already kind of done a number. He ripped his eyeballs out. His little feet are, look, it's stuffing's already coming out of, uh, out of his feet. So he was like pretty much half committed uh, from the get go. So first, steps is just to kind of open him up and see how much room I got dealing with. So I went through the um, uh, derriere and that is like the theme of this entire project is going in through the derriere. <laughs> Last minute, I decided to add a feature that I thought would be cool. Like what if um, when the sensor here detects a fart, uh, the nose twitches like this. And I thought that would be really cool. And that's where our servo comes into play. Well, you can't just stick a servo in a soft thing because as it tries to move, it's actually just gonna like, you know, make the head just kind of do weird things and it's not gonna look really realistic. We actually have to build some kind of endoskeleton, almost like a puppeteering uh, type of thing. So this is what I came up with. I'm gonna stick the little LEDs through these PVC pipes and that'll glow the eyes the different colors. And here you see the uh, servo. And the idea here is that I'm gonna put like a toothpick or probably double up toothpicks. You can always see, uh, already see I kind of have a hook there for it. And it's gonna go like this. And that's what's going to move our nose. Well, the last thing you want to do is um, walk up to the person and just kind of like, you know, we'll put the sensor on, on the bottom end because we need to be able to see the eye. So we'll position them like this. Well, it's kind of weird to go up to someone and just kind of like stick the butt against their butt. You know, they're going to know what you're up to. So I thought it'd be kind of neat to have some kind of extension device. So you can be holding a Fartitokis and with this lever here, just extend and the uh, sensor, it'll do the sensing without you having to get all that close. And these right here, I thought I'd leave them hollow in order to run wires through them and putting the sensor here at the end of the tail somehow. This is what we're gonna figure out today. So what we have here is our Arduino. It is being powered through this ethernet cable which is connected to my laptop over here. It's got several pins. You can see that I have a breadboard and all of my components are on the breadboard. So the Arduino is powering the breadboard and the way it's doing that is I'm running this red wire from a five volt pin here. It's going around and connecting, if you see this red line here, to this positive rail. So now that it's connected, anything that I plug into this entire rail will get power. Here with this sensor too is a signal wire and we have it connected to an analog. So it reads uh, an analog reading. So it's not reading PPM. Uh, we're getting an analog reading that you can, of course, then use code to convert uh, to PPM. But honestly, that's a lot of rigmarole. And for our purposes, we just want to know, like, 
is there a fart or is there not a fart? And somewhat, how bad is, is the fart? We don't need to get into specific PPMs. Then we have our LEDs. And now the they always need resistors. I'm using a 220 ohm for this. And let's see if we can uh, now begin to transfer what's on here onto him. Oh dear, hold up, hold up. I ain't seen any better with these glasses until I clean them. Of course, with uh, micro servos or servos, mostly servos, you never want to power them off your board because you're just going to fry your board that way. But because we're prototyping, we're going to go ahead and this time power it off the board. It's just a micro servo. Uh, we should be fine. Famous last words. I just did it. This thing's going to blow up now just because I said that. <laughs> brown with brown. And that's our ground. And then orange or uh, red, I mean. It looks kind of orange to me and then our signal wire. To connect it to the board, all we have to do is take our ground here and connect it anywhere along this blue rail. So I'm just gonna pick, I don't know, right there, right? That's good enough place for me, right? And then connect the red. This is where you start seeing that having the hands of a four-year-old is super, you know, helpful to the red rail. And that leaves our little orange guy here. So where do we connect it? Well, we want to connect it to one of these pins on the Arduino. And I'm going to pick pin number nine. And I'm just going to turn this towards me. I'm cheating so I can see what the heck it is I'm doing. And let's take a brief look at the code that I think I came up with that I think will make all of this work. I'm not going to get super, super deep into this code because, um, you know, we can save that for an actual course or a lesson. I'm just kind of giving you guys like a high level overview, just some generalities to go through. And we want this servo to start at position 90 because our nose is, you know, going this way. Well, we want the servo to start 90 so it doesn't start like crooked. These are the conditions that actually turn on the LED. So condition number one, if the sensor reading is less or equal to 400, and again, this is an analog reading, not a PPM reading, uh, then the green LED, we want it to be high. That means it gets the voltage high, low, no voltage, uh, high, yes, voltage. If the sensor reading is above 400, but below 500, that's when the yellow one turns on. But in addition to the yellow one turning on, this is where we start loading our servo action. And for each motion, I'm giving it 15 milliseconds to perform that motion. So yellow light is on, we're getting kind of a sweep of the nose. Something is stinking. So if, no con if none of these conditions are met, meaning it's not below 400, it's not 400 to uh, 499, well, then the only other option is that this thing is like above 500, right? So that means that the red LED will then be turned on. So things are like dire. And again, you'll see the same code for the servo, except one difference. And that is this seven seconds here, uh, seven versus 15. So that means that the nose is gonna move a little faster. So I thought that would be kind of a cool differentiation other than just LEDs for us to know something is going on. What we're going to do now is see if this even works and if the servo or Arduino grenades because I plugged in the servo to the Arduino, which I specifically told you guys not to do. So I'm going to hook uh, this into our Arduino right here in the barrel. Oh, look, guys, look, look. It's moving and the yellow is on. Now again, uh, what, anytime you turn on the sensor, it does need a little time and I'm talking on it, giving it that like uh, carbon dioxide, I'm getting closer and uh, t trying to breathe. Look guys, it's moving <sighs> faster. One of the things that we're gonna do is totally eliminate this breadboard. We are only gonna use the Arduino and the wiring. So the very first one says AO which is going to be our analog. So I'm going to put the orange one on there. And then the next one is ground. So it's a little bit in reverse than what this is. I'm going to skip one, which is the DO. And then the second to the last one here is the ground. Maybe I should have wired this before gluing it on. <laughs> Makes it a little bit tougher. And the VCC, which is our power, goes right here. 
All right, now all three of these, you know, clearly aren't gonna fit there. So I'm gonna have to weave one after the other. And also with these connectors, uh, they do make them in different sizes. I have them all the same size. So I probably should have thought about getting them in different sizes for this. So that way I don't have to run a whole bunch of them. So that's that. Now his tail is going to be kind of puffy. So it will hide some of these imper imperfections. Now, of course, for our breadboard, we only have one of each color. So we got a Cyclops Fartatook is going on right now. And that's just not going to do. We're going to do two of each color. This was for the purposes of seeing, does the code even work? So here, this longer lead right here, that's always going to be your anode. So that's how you know. The power has to be hooked up to this, this guy right here. Then you're going to see a shorter, a shorter lead. And that's your cathode. Uh, and so, of course, that goes to ground and your resistor can go on either. It really doesn't matter where your resistor goes. Uh, for prototyping, I tend to put it on the anode because it's less wires on the breadboard. Uh, for actual wiring, I tend to put it on the cathode. And you can do either. For me, it's just important to keep it consistent. We're gonna start with the red LED, probably the most important LED of the project because that means military grade run. And hopefully this person carries a permit for what they're releasing. And so I'm going to get this little guy hooked up here. Let's tin the tip. Try and reach under here. Please don't break apart. And I'm heating the, the connection here first before applying the solder. And I'm heating it from the bottom. That way when I apply the solder on top, it'll like wick through. Let me see. So I'm gonna let that cool off. And next we are going to hook up our positive to the other end and then we'll hook up the negative and we'll use our heat shrink tubing. I always forget to put that on and then I got to cut the wire. I admit I just do electrical tape, you know, sometimes. So that's our secret. Yeah. Oh, oh, I should have put the tube on first, but I'm wondering if I can put it on this end. Oh, I'm going to try and cheat people. I'm going to try and cheat. Let's see, do cheaters win? You know what they say, cheaters never win. Let's see <laughs> if, if I, I might win this time. And didn't I tell you guys that from the beginning of the stream? Like, oh, I always forget to do this. As evidenced, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same and cut the little end off this guy. And I like to save these little noggins. They always, uh, you know, they always come in handy. And you can see that it's wound and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna hold it under the joint, let it heat up the joint. And this tip is a little bit, oh, a little bit big for this job, but it's the one I was using for another project. So I'm gonna unplug the soldering iron here and move this aside for now, or put it right back where it was. <laughs> I thought I was gonna move it aside, but I'm not. I'm gonna put the heat shrink all the way up. There we go. I'm gonna fire it up. All right, so that should be pretty good there with our heat shrink tubing. And I'm gonna do the black one as well. So after that, you can see that each of them has a pin and they would just connect it directly to the Arduino. So if we have, of course, our power facing down, because I'm thinking I'm gonna put where its legs are right here, some kind of power battery supply that I'm gonna hide it in the leg. So once our LED is inside the eye socket, and I'll just kind of keep them like this, all we're gonna do is plug the red, because this is red, uh, I'm gonna plug it into the port number 13, just like we had in our code. Uh, but because we're gonna do two reds, I'm gonna have to change the code a little bit and add a couple more LEDs, three more LEDs. And if we were to finish weaving this thing, uh, it's also gonna come up to our board here in which the orange one is going to connect to our A5 pin and you can tie all the grounds together for your projects and stick it into the main ground. The servo is the only thing that's gonna be a little bit different. The orange signal wire for the servo here 
is gonna come into the board and the orange wire is gonna plug into pin number nine because that's how it's getting its input. Like, what do I have to do? Like, if it's yellow, what do I do if it's red? Uh, but the power and the ground are actually gonna get wired to a totally separate battery. So the way I would wire the servo is have this end right here go into the Arduino. Obviously, this is our signal wire or control wire. So that has to go to the Arduino, leaving me the power and the ground. So what happens here is I'm gonna chop these noggins off right here and match up red to red and black to black or brown to black in this case and that'll hook up to the battery so we've done a lot of good things today nothing caught on fire yet you know we still we still got time but we avoided uh you know nothing grenaded so that's all good and you can see where i'm going to mount my board we're getting awfully awfully close the female of this orange wire is going to uh, go ahead and connect to our pin number nine and then these two wires i'm going to leave as this for now because they're going to go to the external power supply which is not here yet so guys let's see no obstructions look it, it closes all the way opens all the way so i think we have enough slack in this so this is done and all i have to do is wire up the leds for the eyes we have one done right here and I just got to wash, rinse, repeat, you know, like that commercial. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for joining me today. I always have fun when you guys join. You, you always have great ideas. Sometimes it's nice to borrow uh, ideas and, you know, and that's fancy for stealing your ideas. Sometimes you are too in the weeds with your project and it's nice to have people that are kind of taking that, uh, you know, 50 foot view and saying, hey, this is a much better way of uh, connecting it. And you guys see the final result. I do implement a lot of your ideas. So Thanks so much for joining. My name is Rachel DeBarros and you have been watching Gearhead Diva. Check out the Wrench Army for bonus videos and project plans for all of this.